Hey, Dr. David Jockers here, doctor of natural medicine. Today I'm talking about the top 10 foods to reduce inflammation. We know that the food we can eat can be the slowest form of poison or your body's natural medicine, right? Meaning that the food you eat can literally either heal your body and provide the, the key building blocks you need to thrive in life or it can actually turn up inflammatory mechanisms inside your body that break you down, that are catabolic, that tear down your muscle tissue, your joints, that destroy your brain, your cardiovascular system, that literally end up causing chronic disease in your system. Unfortunately, in our society, way too many people are consuming foods that are high in inflammatory compounds. The most inflammatory things are things like sugar, processed sugars, right? Really anything that really increases your blood sugar significantly, which typically are gonna be from your ultra processed foods that are higher, you know, they're hyper palatable, meaning that they have like incredible tastes and flavors to them because they're like a chemical cocktail, right? So they've literally been made in a lab and they just fire up your neurology and they create an addictive mechanism. So, I mean, I'm talking about things like Doritos, and um, you know donuts and all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, these are not natural foods that our ancestors were exposed to and they create addictive cycles and they're highly inflammatory. So sugars, processed foods, seed oils in general, anything with corn oil, soybean oil, safflower, cotton seed oil, um, we wanna avoid those things for sure. Anything with trans fats, if you see um, you know, anything that, that says partially hydrogenated or hydrogenated oil, that is highly inflammatory, massively damaging to your body. So avoid those things. And instead, these are the kinds of things you wanna consume. Now, here's the caveat. Even a natural healthy food for you know, one individual can be extremely healthy and beneficial. For somebody else, they may have a unique food sensitivity that for whatever reason, it may drive up inflammation in their system. So these are the foods that for most people are gonna be incredibly beneficial and incredibly healing. However, you may be out there and you may think, oh, he's got eggs on the list. When I eat eggs, my joints hurt. When I eat eggs, I get brain fog. When I eat eggs, my liver hurts. I get constipated, whatever it is. If that's the case, then avoid that food, right? There's plenty of other things on this list that you can be consuming to help bring down inflammation. But for the ma vast majority of people, 95% that are out there, these foods right here should be staples in your diet. So number one is wild caught salmon. Wild caught salmon is one of the most nutrient dense foods you could put in your body. Salmon is naturally rich. You know, if it's wild caught, like from Alaska, Salmon is a cold water fish, and the reason why salmon is able to thrive in cold water is because of the high amount of omega-3 fatty acids, particularly long chain omega-3s, EPA and DHA, which have been shown to dramatically reduce inflammation and improve cellular function in our bodies. So when we consume them, we get better, we get stronger, we get more resilient. Wild salmon, for example, they're an incredible species of fish. They're the only species that I know of that can swim upstream, right? Most fish are swimming downstream, which doesn't take as much work, right? Because the, uh, the actual flow of the river um, will push them downstream, but salmon swim against that, right? Which is counterintuitive. So they're actually doing more work, having to produce more cellular energy in order to do that. They swim upstream against the rapids and they can literally jump 10 feet out of the water. That's an incredible amount of cellular energy they produce. And why, what allows them to be able to do it? Well, very, very sensitive hormonal systems because of the omega-3s on all the cells of their body, they've got a, a perfect balance of omega-3s as well as saturated fat to create structure, like a strong structure cell. The cell needs structure and it needs um, stability. And that's what saturated fat allows. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's too penetrable. Viruses, bacteria can penetrate the cell and damage the cell. So it needs the structure and that's what saturated fat provides, but it also needs a level of fluidity and that's what the omega-3s provide. So they have a perfect cell membrane and on top of that, they, they have a lot of this, this natural antioxidant called astaxanthin, which actually gives them the pink color. Astaxanthin is something like 100 times more powerful than vitamin C at buffering against reactive oxygen species, free radicals and inflammation. So astaxanthin really along with those omega-3s, really gives it the, uh, their, uh, the mitochondria, the ability 
to produce rampant amounts of energy and buffer all the oxidative stress and all the metabolic de debris that takes place when we produce energy. So when we consume that, we confer those benefits. We can convert astaxanthin into powerful, uh, powerful antioxidant scavenger that drives up our cellular energy production. So wild caught salmon, amazing. Again, it's also rich in B vitamins, B12, vitamin E, a lot of key nutrients in there. So wild caught salmon should be at the staple of our diet, unless again, you have like a salmon allergy, right? Outside of that, you should do great with that. Extra virgin olive oil. This is something I try to get one to two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil in my diet every single day. Now, extra virgin olive oil is very rich in monounsaturated fats. So we talked about omega-3s, we talked about saturated fats. Monounsaturated fats are also very, very stable and very anti-inflammatory. The main monounsaturated fat is called oleic acid. That's what extra virgin olive oil is very rich in. It's also very rich in vitamin E, which helps protect the epithelial lining of our blood vessels as well as our gut, right? So it really helps protect our gut from damage. It protects our blood vessels from damage. Um, and it's also, extra virgin olive oil is also rich in polyphenols like oleocanthal and hydroxytyrosol, which protect our blood brain barrier. Um, oleocanthal they call nature's aspirin, right? Because it's really powerful at bringing down inflammation and reducing pain in the body. And then they also have, extra virgin olive oil also has phytosterols, which help balance out our lipids. Cholesterol, right? Helps improve HDL levels. And so you get a lot of great benefits from extra virgin olive oil. I recommend fresh pressed, high polyphenol extra virgin olive oil. My favorite brand I am going to list in the notes, it's called fresh pressed olive oil and you can actually get your first bottle for just $1. So check that out in the notes below this video. So extra virgin olive oil, I recommend one to two tablespoons every single day. You can take it straight up if you want to, you can put it on salads. You can even cook with it. I know people say don't cook with it, you do lose some of the antioxidant benefits when you cook with it, but because of those powerful antioxidants, it does have stability when it's being cooked. So you lose, you don't get all those benefits I talked about, but it's not gonna combust and create you know, rancid fats unless you're like deep frying it for 30 minutes, right? Which we really shouldn't be doing. So extra virgin olive oil, really good. Best raw, but can also be consumed cooked. Berries, number three, berries and hydrating fruit. Hydrating fruit would be things like watermelon, for example. Now, I know a lot of you guys are like, well, fruit, that's gonna have a lot of sugar in it. And yes, fruit does have sugar in it. How, and we're not supposed to, we really don't wanna consume high amounts of fruit. However, what's interesting about berries and hydrating fruits in general is they have a, a really powerful form of water inside of them. We call it structured water. That structured water enhances the hydration of the cells about 10 times better than just drinking water on our own, right? So if we're, we go and we drink filtered water, that's a good thing. There's a lot of benefits to that. But only, you know, we, we really don't get tremendous amount of cellular hydration from that. We're actually gonna get better cellular hydration from consuming hydrating rich fruits and vegetables. There's certain vegetables like cucumber, celery, that are rich also in hydrating fluids. And that's one of the best benefits of fruit. Of course, we also know that fruit can contain vitamin C, potassium, magnesium, right? A lot of these key compounds, electrolytes, antioxidants in them, like watermelon, for example, very rich in vitamin C. Pineapple is very rich in proteolytic enzymes that help bring down inflammation in the body. It's also a very good hydrating fruit. And then berries are very rich in compounds that enhance the diversity of our microbiome. For example, that we have things like anthocyanins that we find in blueberries. Anthocyanins protect the blueberries from UV radiation. They also protect us, our, you know, they're, they're, they buffer oxidative stress in our system. So if we're being exposed to radiation, too much sun, things like that, um, they're gonna help buffer that in our system and help us deal with the free radicals. On top of that, the anthocyanins and there's also other compounds like still beans in those berries. Um, they also protect against pathogens, right? You know, bacteria, parasites, um, you know, different, different microorganisms, they want to consume the berry, right? They want the fruit, they want the sugar and the nutrients in the berry. So they're trying to eat it. These compounds are like a natural, you know, pesticide in a sense, natural herbicide. And so inside of our gut, they actually preferentially favor the development of healthy, 
a healthy microbiome, healthy gut bacteria, and they have helped to reduce unhealthy, unhealthy bacteria, unhealthy microorganisms in our system. There's compounds like, for example, allagic acid, which is very rich in pomegranate or really any astringent fruit. Astringent is like the kind of dry sort of bitterness that we'll taste when we consume certain fruits. If you ever had pomegranate, you know what I mean. It's also, we'll, we'll find it in things like muscadine grapes, cranberries. If you have a cranberry, it's sour, it's astringent. It almost feels drying, right? That's that astringent flavor. That, the, the main compound involved with that astringency is called allagic acid. Allagic acid, our gut microbiome, will break that down and produce something called urolithins. Those urolithins will actually increase the mitochondria within our intestinal cells, right? So in our small intestine, for example, we only have one cell wall that's literally protecting the gut from the bloodstream. We wanna keep that cell wall as strong as possible, as resilient as possible. The more mitochondria in that cell wall, the more resiliency we're gonna have there, the less chance we're gonna have leaky gut, and leaky gut is a precursor to chronic inflammation in our body. So allagic acid is one of the most powerful compounds that we can be consuming to help protect and create more resiliency in that gut lining. We get that in those astringent fruits. So I'm a big fan of getting berries, hydrating fruits, Certainly there are some of these fruits that are hybridized to be a lot more sweeter. Like for example, a lot of the red apples out there are a lot sweeter than the apples that our ancestors consumed. If you, if you ever find an apple tree just growing in nature, most of the time it's like crab apples, right? It's very, very drying. You get a lot of the astringent flavor. It's, it's the green apples, the Granny Smith type apples that are much more drying and they have that astringent property to it. That's quercetin, they have, they're very rich in quercetin, which is another powerful anti-inflammatory compound, um, as well as things like allagic acid. So berries, hydrating fruit, the, 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 the sweeter the fruit tastes, the less you wanna consume, but the more active your body are, is, like if you're exercising, if you're staying active like I teach, the more of that you have tolerance for because your body's gonna be able to buffer that blood sugar and you're gonna need more of those hydrating elements, that, that structured water in your system. So berries, hydrating fruit. Number four is avocado. One of my favorites, avocado is super rich in magnesium, manganese, potassium, all key for energy production. Um, also a great source of healthy oleic acid, the same monounsaturated fat that we found in the extra virgin olive oil. We're gonna find that in avocado. We're also gonna find vitamin E in there, vitamin A. We talked about vitamin A and vitamin E really critical for the, for the barrier, the intestinal barrier, as well as the epithelial cells, um, or sorry, the endothelial cells in our cardiovascular system that protect our capillaries, protect our, um, our arteries, our blood vessels from any sort of oxidative damage and inflammation. So we have that in there. There's also a unique type of sugar that's in avocados, and it's called D-manoheptalose. And that D-manoheptalose actually increases collagen production. So it's really good for renewing and regenerating skin cells. So avocado, a lot of people actually put avocado, like an avocado paste on their, their skin to help with you know, reducing wrinkles and acne and things like that. And it can be really helpful. They'll combine things like lemon juice and avocado and kind of make a mash, almost like a guacamole right, that they're putting on their face. And it can be really, really beneficial. But on top of that, avocado just consuming it in our body, very, very good for skin, hair, joints, things like that. So avocados are great. Bone broth, you know, we talked about skin health. Bone broth has the natural amino acids that produce collagen, right? It's coming from the joint structure and the bones themselves. Very rich in glycine. Glycine is a critical amino acid that's needed for, um, you know, basically for liver detoxification, very, very important for liver detoxification, as well as healthy joints, healthy nails, um, healthy gut lining. Glycine is really critical for that. Also very rich in chondroitin and hyaluronic acid and glucosamine. One of the most, one of the most highly sold or sought after supplements on the market is a joint supplement called glucosamine chondroitin. You may have heard of that. You could find it pretty much at any drugstore, any supermarket. You'll find like a whole row and they'll have a whole bunch of glucosamine and chondroitin because so many people are dealing with arthritis, degenerative joints, and that's been really highly marketed for, and, and it's had a lot of good results with people having improvements in joint health. Well, your natural, the way you naturally get it from the food that you're consuming is consuming bone broth 
and the collagenous regions of meat. Like if you're eating a chicken wing or a turkey leg, the healthiest part is actually the joint structure itself, right? Our ancestors used to bite the, the kind of cartilaginous joint and consume that. And if you just get, you know, an animal, like if you, if you consume, you know, for, if you go to a butcher, a lot of times they're cutting up the tendons, the ligaments, and they're removing them because they're not as appetizing and they take longer to chew. So for a lot of people, they're like, oh, this just tastes grisly, right, when they're consuming it. But actually, that's where the collagen is. That's where the glucosamine, the hyaluronic acid, all these compounds that are so critical for joints, that's where they're located, right, is in the joint structure, in the tendons. So obviously, you can consume them if you're consuming like a whole animal, like nose to tail eating. But on top of that, you're going to get them if you cook up. You can actually boil down the bones and the joints, soften them up, and now you, know, you have a bone broth or you can make bone broth stew or bone broth soup, and you're getting a lot of those compounds in your system. Also great for the immune system as well. Number six is eggs, right? Pasture-raised eggs in particular, when, eggs, when, when chickens are raised on natural pasture, they're consuming worms, grass, different things like that. They're going to have higher levels of omega-3 fats. They're going to have higher levels of something called conjugated linoleic acid, which is great for the metabolism, really dramatically reduces inflammation in the body. Um, it's actually anti-cancer, right? So actually research on CLA being a anti-carcinogen, so reducing your risk of cancer. And we find that in high amounts in your pasture-raised eggs and in this one as well, grass-fed butter. When the cows are eating grass, they're also producing a lot of this CLA, right? So when animals eat grass, you know, humans, we can't eat grass. We can't metabolize it. We talk a lot about, hey, you know, eating a lot of greens and things like that. But honestly, greens can be a tough thing for our body to actually break down our digestive system. Whereas a lot of animals can break it down effectively, particularly things like, you know, cows. They have multiple stomachs. They're able to really break it down, extract all the nutrients. When we consume the dairy, like for example, the butter um, or the meat, we can get a lot of these unique compounds. Um, a lot of antioxidants, believe it or not, in grass-fed meat, grass-fed butter. One of them is conjugate linoleic acid, just this really powerful fat that's anti-carcin, you know, anti-carcinogen or anti-cancer. There's also butyric acid in both the eggs and the grass-fed butter. Butyrate or butyric acid is a short chain fatty acid that helps heal and regenerate the gut lining. So it reduces inflammation there. It's also really powerful for reducing your risk of heart disease, butyrate. And also really great for brain health. Increasing the amount of butyrate, um, either from your microbiome breaking down fiber and producing it, or by consuming it from things like eggs, grass-fed butter, is going to improve your ability to focus, concentrate, your mood. Butyrate has a tremendous amount of benefits. You can also supplement with it. We sell one called Tributarin X, that when people have significant histamine reactions, a lot of food sensitivities, a lot of times we'll just put them on that supplement and we'll start seeing these things going down and we'll see significant healing going on in their gut. And then they're able to start to tolerate a lot of these natural foods that help improve butyrate levels. So uh, gra eggs, grass-fed butter, both rich in that. They're also rich in choline, which helps with bile flow, as well as um, really great for brain. Phosphatidylcholine is really critical for acetylcholine production, which is a neurotransmitter that's associated with memory formation. That's associated with cognitive acceleration, your ability to think sharply and quickly and really perform at your best. So eggs, grass-fed butter, both rich sources of those. Uh, the choline, those compounds, omega-3s you're going to find in there as well. We talked about the benefits of omega-3s and we talked about wild-caught salmon. So really good stuff there. Now, number eight, I just took a couple of my favorite vegetables and there's there's reason why I put these three, arugula, celery, and cucumbers. And I, I actually should add sprouts as well, things like broccoli sprout, sprouts, radish sprouts. Arugula is a dark green, bitter, uh, green leafy vegetable basically. And so I used to just say, okay, all green leafy vegetables. However, some green leafy vegetables have more anti-nutrients than others. For example, spinach can be a healthy food for some people. However, it's higher in oxalates, oxalic acid. And for individuals that are at risk for kidney stones or don't metabolize oxalates well, oxalates can build up in the system, create joint pain. They can create brain fog. Um, a lot of autistic individuals get more flares when they're consuming high oxalate foods like chocolate, nuts, 
spinach. Um, and so arugula is a low oxalate, dark green leafy, and it's got a bitter astringent flavor. We talked about the benefits of that sort of astringency. Now, arugula is not high in oleic acid, but it has compounds in it that are very, very good for liver detoxification and bile flow. I always say bitter is good for the liver, right? That's a great um, little rhyme that you can remember. If something is bitter, if it's natural plant that has a bitter flavor to it, you know it's gonna be good for liver health. And arugula is great for liver health, great for bile flow, thinning the bile, helping the bile flow out. Bile really helps you emulsify fats, absorb fat soluble nutrients like vitamin A, E, D, vitamin K. On top of that, really important for getting toxins out of your system as well. So arugula is great, um, also rich in chlorophyll. Celery, celery is fantastic for your body as well. We talked about it has a lot of that structured water. It's kind of like the perfect, it's got the perfect mineral balance in there, great for your body. Also very rich in silica, which is great for skin, great for detoxification. Cucumbers as well, a lot of crossover benefits between celery and cucumbers. Both are very silica rich. And silica, again, it's a trace mineral, very important for skin health. That's why a lot of people, you know, they'll have the cucumbers like over their eyes and over their face to help reduce wrinkles, to help improve skin and shine. A lot of that benefit is the structured water that we talked about, the structured water, really powerful for skin health, and the silica that's in there. Um, really good, really good from that perspective. And these are tend to be lower in oxalates, lower in anti-nutrients. Number nine, grass-fed beef. Grass-fed beef is like a perfect food. Cows, when they're fed on grass, they're allowed to free range, right? And just consume a 100% green diet, not a kind of a grain finish like a lot of farmers will do to fatten them up. When they're fed grass all year round, right? Up until, you know, the day of butchering, um, they, they develop high levels of conjugate linoleic acid, carnosine, carnitine, these compounds that help support mitochondrial energy production, help balance blood sugar, very rich in, in protein. Obviously, protein's so critical for lean body tissue development, for blood sugar stabilization, insulin sensitivity, very rich in healthy fats, omega-3 fatty acids, so they have the right, um, they have the right omega-6 to omega-3 balance in them. I mean, we could talk all day about the great nutrients, vitamin B12, iron, vitamin B6, vitamin B2 that you're gonna find in grass-fed beef. One of the best things you can consume, and I could label right there with it things like lamb, for example. Lamb's fantastic, right? very similar nutrient profile as the grass-fed beef. Bison, really, really good. So all of those sorts of ruminant animals, okay, that are kind of feeding on pasture, and they have multiple stomachs and they're breaking it down and really like pulling all the nutrients out of, because they have multiple stomachs and a unique bacterial balance, they're pulling all the nutrients out of the grass and putting it into their meat. Dairy products can be really, really helpful. And then number 10 is coconut oil or coconut milk. Coconut oil and coconut milk, very rich in medium chain saturated fats or medium chain triglycerides that turn quickly into ketones in our bloodstream which give us a natural sense of satiety. We know ketones inc or reduce inflammation in the body. They actually are what we call an epigenetic modulator in the brain. That's a big term that means that they actually influence the genetic expression of the cells in the brain, in, the, in, our, in our neurons, in our brain, to help downregulate inflammation and to improve mood, to improve energy production, to reduce your risk of neurodegenerative conditions, depression, bipolar disorder, different things like that. They stabilize blood sugar. There's also some of these fats, caprylic acid, for example, lauric acid in there, very good for your immune system. They're very naturally antifungal, antibacterial, so they help kill bad pathogens that may be built up in your system and support and strengthen your immune system. So coconut oil, coconut milk, Really good stuff. So these are, most of these here are very calorie dense foods, right? A couple of them, of course, you know, these things right here, not a whole lot of calories in there, but that's more of, you know, and we can also include, again, sprouts like broccoli sprouts, uh, radish sprouts that you can add in as well, which are really rich in um, basically compounds that help you bo your body detox bad estrogens. They help upregulate what we call the antioxidant response enzymes in your system to help buffer oxidative stress. These things are like good garnishes that you can kind of include in your meals. Um, you know, right here with hydrating fruit, I can, I can include things like tomatoes if you don't have a nightshade sensitivity. 
That's also got that structured water in there. Lots of, it's got lycopene, lots of different compounds that are anti-inflammatory. So this right here, you know, consuming these things, that should be about 80% of the calories, right? If not more that you're consuming on a regular basis coming from these foods. If you do that, you're going to see a noticeable improvement in your energy, your mental clarity, your just spark for life, your skin health, all of those things. So really focus on these foods, remove the ultra processed foods completely out of your diet. Don't fill up on um, inferior foods. Inferior foods are gonna be things like grains, rice, oatmeal, uh, breads, right? These are inferior foods. For some of them, they're more inflammatory than others, but they don't have the nutrients and the, the, the structured water and the different compounds, the proteins that a lot of these foods have. So don't fill up on them. If you're gonna have them, have them in small moderation, but focus 80% of your calories coming from these foods right here, and you're gonna see a big change and a big improvement. So guys, share this video with somebody that you know and that you care about. If you have not subscribed to our channel, now is the time to do that. Hit the bell button, that way you get notified whenever I put up a new video, and we'll see you in the next online training. Be blessed, everybody.